Hello and welcome to this video covering TLS 1.3 support in Cisco Secure Firewall Release 7.2. I'm Christopher Grabowski, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco Systems. Now Cisco Secure Firewall supports TLS 1.3 decryption with Snort 3 for both HTTP version 1.1 and 2. The decrypted traffic can be inspected by both the intrusion prevention and the malware detection modules. You can configure the TLS 1.3 decryption rules protecting your users with decrypt resign, as well as for non-key decryption for ingress traffic to your servers. By default, Cisco Secure Firewall strips the encrypted SNI payloads. However, you can set the option to block requests containing ESNI completely. The zero round trip time resumption feature is considered an undecryptable action, and you can decide if you want to pass it undecrypted or block it completely. The software changes that added TLS 1.3 support were done to both Lina and Snort, and are transparent from the user interface perspective. The only configuration you need for TLS 1.3 support is to enable it in the advanced settings in the SSL decryption policy. For this demonstration, I'll use the iCAR anti-malware file. For those of you guys who haven't used it before, iCAR is a vendor agnostic test file recognized by anti-malware, antivirus, and IPS software. The file contains specific text string recognized by all security vendors and is harmless to your endpoints. It was designed to help you test if the security product is actually doing its job and inspecting the traffic. First, I'll navigate to iCars page before I enable TLS 1.3 decryption on my Threat Defense Firewall. Looking at the security details, we can see the connection is secured by TLS 1.3 and the certificate of the site is signed by a trusted public root CA. As the firewall has no visibility to TLS 1.3 encrypted packets, we can download the file and read its content. Now let's go to the Firewall Management Center and enable the TLS 1.3 decryption. I'll open the decryption policy and enable TLS 1.3 in the advanced settings. And that's it. The rest of the configuration is exactly the same as for TLS 1.2. I will now add the rule to decrypt traffic from my network towards the iCAR site. I need to set the name and ensure the rule is inserted in the right place. In the action, I'll select decrypt resign and use a firewall sub CA certificate I issued previously from my corporate CA. I'll match the traffic with subject name dn equals to star.icar.org. I'll enable logging and now we are ready to deploy the policy. Let's have a look at the iCar page once again. In the security details, we can confirm the traffic is still secured with TLS 1.3. And by looking at the certificate chain, we can confirm the firewall is indeed resigning iCAR certificate. Now let's try to download the iCAR file again and confirm firewall blocks the transfer. If we look at the logs, we can see a bunch of events showing that the iCAR file was detected and blocked by both IPS and malware detection modules. In the connection detail, we can confirm the traffic was decrypted using our iCAR SSL policy rule and version was TLS 1.3. In the malware event, we can see the name of the downloaded file along with the thread score and the URL. The iCAR file transfer also triggered a snort rule and if we look at the actual packet bytes, we can see the iCAR string. Thanks for watching and see you next time.